A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on the German East Africa campaign, and the attempts to von Leto Forbeck to defeat the British, or at least hold out against them, which he did quite successfully, or at least as successfully as he could. But, believe it or not, there were even more men in the German military caught in strange parts of the world, unable to receive any material or support from the homeland, stuck having to fight their way out of bad situations as World War I broke out. Even though there were pre-war treaties that were supposed to keep the colonies out of fighting if a European war broke out, those were thrown away in about five minutes and all the German colonies found themselves under attack. And one of the groups this affected the most was the German East Asia Squadron under Maximilian von Spee. And uh, get your Fs ready, this one doesn't turn out as well as the last one. Spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't heard of this 100-year-old event yet. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build and manage your business or side project. Go to the link in the description box and use my code POTENTIALHISTORY to get 10% off your first purchase of Squarespace. Maximilian Johannes Maria Hubert Reichsgraf von Spee. Seriously? The commander of the East Asia Squadron had, like, a lot of German aristocracy with a von in their name, received quite a bit of training and had quite a long career before we get to him in this story. Joining the Navy at a young age, back when the German Navy was just supposed to defend the coast, spending some time in Africa, Asia, working his way up the ranks until he eventually was commander of the East Asia Squadron. In 1914, as the war broke out, he found himself in a pretty bad position as Germany only controlled a few colonies within Asia, and the Allied powers pounced on them rather quickly, with Germany being very outnumbered. As the German colonies began to fall rapidly to the Allies, he realized that he just had nothing that he could do anymore in Asia, and decided that his fleet would be better used back home in Europe defending Germany. And so he gathered up the band and tried to head back home. This was not before one of the ships in his squadron, the Emden, under Karl von Müller, decided that they wanted to form their own suicide squad and stay behind to raid Allied shipping, and we'll get back to that in a second. Once he had all his ships together, von Spee took them all to the coast of Chile, raiding shipping and getting into some minor engagements all along the way. He did have one big problem, though. The Royal Navy was fairly upset that there were just rogue German ships out in international waters, and they detached a fleet to go and hunt down Spee. This fleet was under Sir Christopher Craddock, but Spee knew that someone was probably coming for him, so he laid a trap. He had one of his ships, the SMS Leipzig, radio messages that could easily be intercepted by the British, making it look like the ship was alone and that it would be an easy target. And on November 1st, Craddock took the bait, and Spee utterly obliterated his fleet, sinking two ships, the Good Hope and the Monmouth, and killing Craddock in the process. F. Craddock was sort of set up to fail, though. He was supposed to have a battle cruiser with him that just never showed up and joined his fleet, and it had been ordered by the Royal Navy to go and search in areas that Spee had been in previously. I'm not really sure why that was, and I couldn't really find a source that definitively said why, but you can probably just add that one up to Wumbo Chumbo's mistake list. Along with that, Craddock had a lot of outdated ships that were mostly crewed by reservists, so it's not really too much of a shock that he was taken down by the much faster and more disciplined German ships. However, this wasn't just a minor defeat halfway across the world. This is the first time the British Navy has seen a defeat in a fair fight in about a hundred years. And Britain entered this war relying heavily on its navy for defense, thinking that the Germans could never break through it, and that that way the home islands would never be invaded if something went south on the continent. So this really shook people's confidence in the Royal Navy. And so because of that, the Royal Navy needed vengeance, and they went about it hard. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss out his ass. They ordered Sir Doveton Sturdy with two battle cruisers, HMS Invincible and HMS Inflexible to hunt down Spee, because they were getting serious now. Those, those names have to be sending a message. To send those two at that time, like, <laughs> they have to be saying something. Spee himself, having lost half his ammunition, realized he really needed to beeline it to the Atlantic before he was completely out. Stopped for coal a few times in Chile and headed directly out. To do this, they had to go around Cape Horn. And right as they were doing that, they got hit by bad weather to where they had to dump a bunch of coal and would have to make another stop. And he decided that this stop would be at the Falkland Islands. We are back on the Falkland Islands and back in strength. Where while he was there, he might as well take out the British radio station and take the governor hostage to ensure free passage all the way back home. Little did he know, though, that Sturdy was headed directly there, and he was going to coal at the Falklands and then go out and look for him. We intend to ensure that aggression does not pay. The British arrived on December 7th and started refueling, 
and the Germans arrived on December 8th. And I can only imagine Sturdy standing on the coast or on one of his ships, looking out to sea, thinking about how he was going to take down von Spee, when lo and behold, over the horizon, he sees smoke billowing into the air, seeing that the person he was supposed to hunt down had been delivered right to him. The British battlecruisers went out right away to meet von Spee, and knowing he was outgunned, he turned around and tried to run away, but the battlecruisers were just too fast. They fairly quickly caught up to him and sank the fleet, von Spee with it. F. The Germans did fight back really hard, but they simply couldn't win the fight. Their ships were outdated compared to what the British brought, and they were half down on ammunition. It, the battle was decided before it started. Sturdy did mention the ferocity in which the Germans fought back, with one of the last sailors to go down still flying the German flag as he sank. Only the SMS Dresden got away, and it survived for about three weeks, but it was eventually hunted down and sunk. Easily the worst tragedy to befall its namesake city. Reap the whirlwind. Oh yeah. Although Spee wasn't successful, it's fairly impressive what he did. Being able to get out of the Pacific Ocean, able to bring the British their first defeat very early in the war, shaking British confidence right off the bat, and getting as far as he did. I mean, this is the second string German Navy against the British Navy, the premier Navy in all the world, and he was able to accomplish all of this. It's pretty impressive. It's probably his decision to detach the Emden, though, that would have the biggest impact. So I'm not going to be able to do this story complete justice. I probably wouldn't be able to in an hour-long video. But the Emden basically went on a killing spree, full-on pirate mode throughout the South Pacific and the Indian Ocean. It did a ridiculously good job at sinking Allied shipping, completely making all British sailors fearful, even raising insurance rates for merchant ships. <laughs> Listing all the ships that it raided and took down would take way too long, so I'm just gonna have them going here on the side across the screen. It's, it's very impressive. And throughout its long spree, its captain, Von Müller, really made a name for himself as a gentleman during the war. Every ship he raided, he made sure that all the crew were safe, and he made sure they were safely returned to land at some point, and they were very well cared for under him. He also refused to raid shipping vessels of neutral nations respecting their neutrality, and was actually pretty well liked by all the people that were captured by him, which is quite an amazing thing. His line of success came to an end, though, at Direction Island where he sent a landing party ashore to take out the British radio station that was able to radio for help before it was taken out. This sent the HMAS Sydney to attack the Enman that had to abandon the men it led ashore and was quickly sunk afterwards in the ensuing battle. Or not quite sunk, but more like beat to hell, run aground on a sandbar, and then shot some more. Von Muller survived the war though and made it back to Germany. Now, although this is the second group of German colonial fighters we've seen either fail or not be able to completely complete their tasks, you have to give these guys credit for sticking it out and fighting this hard. In all these situations outside Germany, they pretty much have the whole world coming down on them, and in a time where surrender would be easy and they could stop fighting and be taken care of, they continue to fight for their country and they keep having this idea of the further we push, the better it will get. And you have to respect him somewhat for it. And you got a feel for him at least somewhat, knowing that when they got home, either after the war or if it was before, eventually, seeing Germany defeated and all their work being for nothing, it would have to at least somewhat raise the question in their heads of what was all that holding out for if at the end of the day, we lost? Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build and personalize your online presence from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace has a great focus on customizing their product and being able to make your own website to completely reflect your needs. Building a website with them is really easy, even for newcomers, and offers an almost overwhelming amount of options to change every detail of every page with a large catalog of starter templates catered to any type of website you're looking to build, from blogs to portfolios that avoid being the same cookie-cutter website designs. You can create your own online business or side pages to sell products with detailed analytics on inventory and sales that can connect to your social media accounts for easy sharing of your content. I'm currently in the final stages of completing a website for the channel, and I hope to to have it out in tandem with this video, so be sure to check the description for that. If you want to make your own site for anything from your channel or in tribute to your favorite German pirate, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash potential history to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon as always for their support with the channel, especially Mason Asher Stewart who requested this video after joining the highest tier. 
The topics everyone has given me for a custom video have been really awesome so far, and I've really enjoyed this one, as I hadn't heard about this story before, and only got into it when I started researching this video. So thank you for showing me this, and giving me the opportunity to do a video on it. I'm also launching my website today that will have some new and different content on it, and you can find the link down below. And it will definitely be growing and have more content as time passes. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.